Hello everybody. This is going to be a skincare live Q&A that you've been waiting for because it's not really to do with skincare and skincare products. It's to do with the glow from within. It's to do with having a healthy body and what we eat. So in the next 45 minutes, Natalie Hayward and I, and Natalie, many of you might know Nat from our Monday, Wednesday, Friday um, workout films that we do. And you've asked me so often, what do I eat? Because recently I have become more trim, and that trimness probably is because I'm getting a healthier body, but also I'm putting less sugar inside my body. And this is also specifically targeted to perimenopausal, menopausal, postmenopausal, because there's lots of you who are outside of that frame, but at some stage you'll get into that frame of life. And being prepared and knowing what to do is going to help you have the healthiest life possible and we've got all the food in the kitchen that I eat every day and that you're going to go through because you've really helped me to kind of be healthier in terms of my sugar mm -hmm. in intake and what I do as sugar substitution because yeah. I am obsessed with sugar and I you know I used to have four sugars in my tea um, for 30 years of my life and I would you know inhale chocolate and it wouldn't be good chocolate every chocolate um, through the day and I would graze and snack when my low energy, my, when my um, blood sugar was down, yep. and it would make my blood sugar even worse. So it's about keeping, what is that, that level, balance. that balance. Insulin. But should balance. we just start with, Nat? Yeah. Let's start with our body, because <laughs> there might be some people out there who have had some kind of Pilates or yoga mm -hmm. or running regime, lots of things, and there might be people who did a bit and then just got out of a habit and in a way I want us to talk to those people so yep. you can at the end of this film think I'm going to do some stuff for me to feel more energetic in my body and we want at the end of this to have inspired you to feel that you can do that okay so okay. you're in a perimenopausal stage yes. you're in your 40s you know what's our body is kind of depleting mm -hmm. itself of a few things like collagen and elastin which yep. do affect our mobility to mm -hmm. an extent don't they absolutely but what is it we've got to really start to be thinking about so also bone density obviously the decline in estrogen and testosterone you're going to start to and muscle mass as well as we get older our muscle mass decreases and our fascia becomes more tight and fascia. what's our fascia because so, you've got to speak really yes. english english on i was about to yeah. explain yeah. the fascia yeah. so fascia think of it as a netting that surrounds your muscles yeah and if that's tight your body is stiff and it big and as you get older it becomes more and more dehydrated and therefore it becomes more tight and you you lose that supple factor so, cranky yeah, I would say, you know, yeah, yeah cranky. exactly. Yeah, our body becomes stiff and cranky. Yeah. And as a woman, unfortunately, when you do go through, you know, perimenopause, menopause, you do your muscle mass declines and you start to get osteopenia, osteoporosis, which is uh, your loss in bone density. Yeah. So therefore, it's really, really important to start to do strength training. We should be doing strength training whatever stage in your life, but it's ultra important if you are if you are a little older because. When you do strength training and you create that damage, good damage in the muscles, mm -hmm. you are building your bone density. So the way it affects and we can, can we build our bone density? Because I never yes. realised to what extent we can do that. You can. Think. In fact, I had a lovely message from someone recently who's been doing my classes, doing our classes, yeah. and she sent me a saying, "I've just had a scan at the doctor's for a dex. She's had a Dexter scan. Yeah. She had early onset um, osteoporosis. osteoporosis. Yeah. She has been doing our workouts." And she has built her bone density back up. She's only got os slight osteopenia in one side of her head. That's incredible. Isn't it? That is that so amazing. I mean, I'm really blown away by that yeah. because my mother has osteoporosis and a worry for me. Mm. You know, I take bone density, yeah. I take bone support yeah. and superior joint. Um, and we can talk a little bit about supplements also Absolutely. that are good to help because I think when you're, you might be on an HRT or you might be perimenopausal, but I take superior joints from Victoria Health, which has ginger mm -hmm. and a few other things in it. Yeah. I take your power up, you told yeah, me, from motor, mm -hmm. motion, motion nutrition, motion yeah. nutrition, and that is helping as well. If that helps, so. that's more with your energy, so that's more what we call a nootropic, which helps your cognition. It helps you to, it's not a stimulant at all, but what it does do, it contains lots of nutrients that help give your brain a boost yeah. and your body a boost. So if you're feeling a bit sluggish in the morning, but you don't want to overload your body with caffeine because that's going to raise your cortisol, which we can talk about yeah. later when we talk about supplements. But what it does do is it gives you that energy boost, but it comes from a cellular level as opposed to your adrenals. And um, when I take them now, because in the morning mm, before we work out, yeah. 
A big difference for me is I take two power up and we'll leave all the things that we talk about listed below fake with me. Yeah. And then I take 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Now if I take it two minutes before, then I threw, <laughs> I threw up last Friday. But generally, you know when people might say, Trini, how do you have the energy in the morning? I know to an extent that contributes. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is sometimes we get energy, not from physical stuff, but as you say, from our motor neuron, because that Absolutely. dictates how our body works. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's, Definitely. yeah, that's, so that's really, so when we talk about strength training, because many people like, and do say what you do now and should you be doing things differently, we want lots of questions, Faith is here to take the questions, but for those of you, for example, who might just have run, so running, I think, is incredible for releasing those endorphins. We Absolutely. love it for that sort of get up and go, but yeah. it's not strength training. It's not strength so training. So why should, if you've been a runner, yeah. and you think, why do I need to do strength training? Mm -hmm. What is the difference so somebody can understand yeah. for their body? So running, first of all, running is, also, is fantastic. If you're running short distances, you have that impact, which is great for, for bone building, but you're not creating a balanced strength in the body. And if you are running a lot, you also really need to do strength training because you start to lose sort of muscle strength maybe around the hips and if your hips or that your muscles around the hips, your glutes, which I yeah. always talk about, your butt muscles, if they're not particularly strong, your back's not supported. And then maybe, you get injury when you And then you yeah. get backache and you yeah. get that impact all the time, you know. And so strength training, you're going to get that structural support, you're going to build your body up to support you the best way it can you know, structurally. So, mm -hmm. so you can, so combining strength training with running is perfect. Running is fantastic. Most people love to run because for their mind, they feel yeah. free, they feel, they feel, you running is the ultimate freedom. If you can run, you can, you feel like, you know, you can run away from something. You can, you know, you're in nature or you just, running makes I you feel free. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Some people hate running. I hate running. Yeah. I and mean, I can't run. And when I see couch to 5K, mm -hmm. and I was in so much admiration of women, and it was a phenomenal, you know, kind of campaign couch to 5k yeah. because it got women off the sofa who were sitting there thinking, I just feel horrible, but didn't have that motivation to yeah. do it. But can you show us now, like if we, we could do five minutes now on yeah. just some things you could do every day. And even if you start and you just did, if somebody just did 15 minutes a day now, yeah. would that make a difference? A thousand, five minutes a day is going to make a difference. Okay. That's the thing. Our bodies are so adaptive. It's, it's you know, one of the most amazing things. Well, let's do a five minute yeah. a day. You've never heard that one before, have you? <laughs> five a day, what you can do that will really help get you on that journey. So what have we got okay. as our tools? So I have brought, you know, we've got some tools here. So now I'm going to start, start with bands. Okay. In fact, we can just do bands. Okay. Because yep. you can, bands provide resistance. Resistance is strength training. So these we get from Amazon. They're about... 10 pounds for Not about even, six or seven. Five pounds. Yeah, five yeah, pounds. So you get different, you get different um, tightness. So extra heavy is quite, um, there's a lot of tension on that. And then this one is a medium and there's, if there's a different tension on it, yeah. you can kind of move out. So, yes. And I've got a long band here mm. as well. So let's get started. So we always want to mobilize the body and do muscle activation. You want to, if you've got a long band, I'm going to start to show you with a long band, yeah. and I get used to do this sometimes because yeah. most of us, we get really tight here, it's going to affect the posture, um, and actually affect your breathing as well, and as we know, breathing. like that, and we can't get the breath out, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, Trini, I'm going to get you to take this band, let's okay. switch. Yeah. I want you to tuck the hips in, so okay. you're not yeah. pushing the butt back, we're not over, yeah, that not actually, that. And that's not good for us, you yeah. want to tuck in, engage the core a little bit, yeah. ribs, over pelvis, so you're going to take that band, mm -hmm. Bring the shoulders down, take a deep breath in, so you're grabbing hold of each end of the band. Yep. You can do this with a belt if you've got one of those or a towel actually. Yep. And you're going to bring it up and over the head behind. It feels in the morning this, oh, I yeah. do this, because I sleep like that and I need to change my posture because mm -hmm. I sleep very tight. Yeah, lots of people sleep on their side, for example, you know, you're all closed in. So this is going to stretch out your chest muscles and you're also activating your back. So I want you to yeah, think about you look really. Back, I'm really Activating those shoulders. Yeah, so Trini's bringing her shoulders down, so she's activating these back muscles. Reminding myself not to slouch. Slouching, it's like when you see, we see our parents or grandparents and their posture has changed. It's not just about the aesthetic of a bent posture, but it's about what it's doing for your body the more your posture is bent. Yeah. When you see people who are going down the past life and they have this incredible posture, I just feel there's so much more in control oh, of their body. Absolutely. Not just that, you know, posture is so related to your mental health as well. If you've got a tall posture, mentally you feel more confident, people look more confident, you feel happier. 
It's you know, it's, it's all related. This applies also to the girls sitting on the floor here, Faith and Poppy and Alva, <laughs> who's got a bad back right now, our lovely, our lovely <laughs> videographer Alva. But I think it is stuff that now you should be doing this kind of mm. stuff, you know, every morning. Okay, yeah. that's that. So you can take this, to, if you sat at a desk, get one of these, take it to work with you, yeah. do it a couple of times a day, okay. feels fantastic. Great. Right, all right, that was so, easy. Could you do that? Yeah. We'll do that, yeah. Okay, okay. so all now right. we're going to do one which, just body weight. Yeah. So I want you to come into a squat position. This is great, you're opening up the hips, you're using those legs, yep. and you're gonna have your hands on the inside of your legs. So you need to take a deep breath and then exhale, reach that right arm up, bring it back down, left arm up. Now here, we are moving our spines. The only way of nourishing your discs is to move your back. So your discs are between the vertebra, and if you're, mo if you're not moving them, they're gonna get stiff and dehydrated, whereas if you're moving them, you're gonna keep your back nice and healthy, which is the, probably one of the most important areas of your body to keep healthy. Okay, last one on each side. Getting a little bit of leg workout in here as well. I'm just gonna remind people on that too. Mm. If you've just joined us, I'm here with Nat, who's um, a phenomenal whole body educator, and we're going to go through today food, exercise and just keeping yourself full of energy and life and health and over there we've got all the food I eat all day laid out and, and what how I've reduced my sugar levels and we're going to go through all of that too so merry requested so we thought we'd do it today okay next okay. up right let's grab our bands Trini I'm going to give you the heavy band thank I you she always gives like me the heavy band yeah. <laughs> yeah and we're going to put it around our ankles okay so you're very familiar with this yes this is actually I use it as a warm-up but you can do this, if you've got five minutes, this yeah. is a perfect workout. Right, let's, we're gonna face, we're gonna face each other, because I want you to tuck in so you can see from the side. Yeah. Legs are super straight. Yeah. Just have the hands in front of the chest yeah. out of the way. Stomach is switched on, yeah. and we're going to walk sideways, keeping those legs like we're pushed plank. apart. Walking. Exactly, yeah. a walking plank. Now, it feels it's, really weird, and it's so, immediately, you feel this. Yeah, tell me, hip. what are you feeling? I'm feeling yeah. in my hip. I'm feeling in my stomach, yep. of my stomach. I'm feeling the strength in my leg, mm -hmm. and I'm feeling also because I'm pushing the tension because yep. it's quite tough to mm -hmm. do. But I'm pushing into my shoulder, yep. I'm pushing into my hands, and your shoulders are back, so you're working your back. back. Yeah. So from the side, your legs are straight, so you're engaging your quads. So you're actually keeping your patella, your kneecaps, tracking, which is good for knee health. And you're firing up those arm muscles. Okay, stop there. We're going to okay. go into some squats. Yeah. So squats. Oh, Tell me when we're done. Five minutes. Just in case you want to go over. <laughs> Deep breath in. Get yeah. nice and low. And then exhale, you're going to dry Why that. is it better to do the squat with this around our ankles? So it's not better. It's going to provide a little bit of resistance. It's what it does is a proprioceptive cue. So you have it here. Speak English again now. I'm, I'm, I'm about to, but you know, I've got to go and sort of make people think cue. that I'm good. We can learn intelligent. Yes. So <laughs> we're going to push those knees out. When you've got the band here, yeah. it wants to bring your legs in. So your brain thinks, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to push out. You're going to activate more muscles, mm -hmm. which is much better because you're going to activate the correct muscles, your glutes and your um, the outer thighs as well. So I'm you're, feeling that. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas if it's not there, you're not feeling it so much. So it provides resistance. So yeah. we're doing resistance training, building our bones, building our muscles. Right, last one. Okay. Then you're going to get down halfway. Yeah. And I always get you to do the Ys yeah. and the Ts. So the hips are back, we're lifting our arms up to the sky, out to the side. The reason we're doing this is to work the muscles around the shoulders, but we're also working on shoulder mobility. So our shoulders can get fixed in that position, that forward rounded position, and we want to open up. It's amazingly so strong in this. I mean, it's like, with you think we're doing nothing, but you yeah. feel every bone in your body is working. Everyone, so yeah. you've got to really think about it though, because anyone could just use Momentum. Yeah. You're not gonna, you want to set the shoulders back, lift those arms, feel your muscles are really working, and then they are. Okay, last one, stop there. Right, we're going to. I've had a 20 minute workout. Yeah, okay. And we hit that for a really quick session. I think that's that's all we need to do for so today. Let's do the arm one, because I love the arm one, this one. We can do that. I just like this. This is just like, it makes me feel good. Okay, all right. Right, your so, band's heavy, so let's see if we're going to bring those up I'm, a little higher. Yes, a little higher, okay. Okay. Arms in front of you, yep. shoulders set down, hips tucked in, yep. and we're gonna go for those little pulses. This is such a good exercise. Bring your arms a little further apart. You want to keep tension in the band, so stop letting that band go slack, keep that tension. <laughs> yeah, I'm this one, yeah. 
I know, you started this training, now you I have know, to really make your bed, now you have to lie yeah, it. Yeah, that moment. <laughs> so you're really getting those arms to work. But yes. It's actually your shoulders, so this area yeah. here. But I'm going to show you the back swing exercise now okay. with the band. All Grab right. this band, yep. triceps, we like this one. Yep. Left hand, right shoulder, so yep. it's the opposite side. Okay. You, if you lean forward a bit, you're going to get a bit more working. Mm -hmm. You extend that arm and bend. So this is working the back of the arm and triceps, so you have to keep the top of the arm really still. And it just goes to show you, you don't really need a gym. If you've got these bands, you can really work the entire body. Now, questions, Faith. I'm sure we have some questions already. Um, yeah, so, Matt, do you have any exercise recommendations for people with impaired mobility or in a wheelchair? Yes, so, if you have impaired mobility and you're... It, it depends what, like, are they able to move their upper body? Because I, even if you're in a... Okay, so, yeah. move upper body, upper body. Torso rotation, really fantastic, because like I said, you still want to be moving... So I should be talking to the camera. Yeah. You still want to be moving your spine, because that's the, you are going to be nourishing your Let's dish. both go to chair, <laughs> yeah, and let's, let's do... do. Let's do now, I've done two classes which are on my Instagram, and they are for people who are in wheelchairs or who have a temporary impaired mobility as well. Maybe you've got a sprained ankle or your lower body is not working. Yep. So we're presuming in this that the upper body yep. is working above the waist. Yeah. Okay. So if you're in your chair, you want to be moving your back, otherwise you are just going to get a lot of stiffness. As I said earlier, you can still do use the back. Yep. You're going to stretch out your chest. You're going to get that upper body moving. Little rotations. You inhale to start. Exhale to rotate. And that's going to rotate you further. This is great if, you, if you're sat at a desk and you just want to release the back yeah. as well. Okay, and then we can bring, you can do that arm movement that Trini just did, yeah. using the bands, up and down, it's going to get those shoulders working. You can even do triceps by leaning forwards and working the triceps out that way. You can do shoulder work, you can do shoulder presses with those weights. If you struggle to get the arms above the head, you can just, as long as you haven't got to the um, these arm rests in the way. You can actually come in to do some back work. So, yep. sorry, yep. Yep. but reverse fly. So you're leaning forwards. You're opening up the chest. You're going to get the back of the shoulders working. Great for the posture. Bicep curls. I mean, it's really endless. You can always work with what with what you've got. You, there's you know there's no limits really. And do look at our ones on Instagram, and we'll try and do a link to YouTube as well because they were two very good workouts in their whole. Should yes. we do weights now? Just two minutes yes. of weight, and then we're going to go to food. So, weights now. Everyone weights. has different weights, yeah. and these are two or three kilos. These are three kilos. Three like kilos. You know, if are... somebody's getting weights, mm. Matt, because weights, I mean, all of this stuff takes up the smallest amount of room, so mm -hmm. you could be in a tiny flat and still be able to work out. But I think having two, three, and four is probably your favorite combination, isn't it? Pro yeah. yeah. So three sets mm -hmm. of weights, so you're going to grow in strength. Yeah, I wouldn't, you know, two, yeah, th maybe just threes, a set of threes and a set of fives if you're going to get any weight. Yeah. So, you can have, let's just see what we can do with one weight. Some, okay. Sometimes people just have a kettlebell, for example. Yeah. Okay. So, the goblet squat. One of the best squats you can do. It's front loaded, which means you're going to work the core, and you're really going to work your butt with this one. So, you can go for a slight turnout, which means you're going to get a little deeper in the squat. You push the hips back, the weights in the heels, deep breath in, and then exhale, drive up, squeeze your bum. Inhale, you get low, exhale, drive up. Now, the heavier the weight, of course, the more difficult it's going to be, and the more effective it's going to be. But if you're doing lots of reps as well, that's going to be... What sorts of reps do you think? Lots of reps. 20? Yeah, so okay. 20 reps, or you can do work for time under tension. So, when I'm teaching you, I often say, right, one minute, because we're doing it together, we're yeah. all at different paces. Yeah. Um, so say one minute to work, and you can change the pace as well. So you could go slowly down, rise up fast, slowly down. That's another way of challenging your muscles. And with this, you're working the outer thigh, you're working the butt, you're working the legs, you're working the core, arms a little bit. So there's a lot going on. So now, mm. I think that gives an introduction to yeah. some things you can do. Um, let's take two or three questions exercise, and then we're going to go to what you put inside your body. So, um, what would you recommend to someone who struggles with sore joints after strength training? Sore joints after strength training, 
decrease the load. So maybe you're going a little too heavy, maybe you need to increase your mobility as well. Maybe you can look at what you're putting inside your body. Yeah. I mean, I don't know your history, I probably need a little more context. You know, what, what, are you, what else are you doing, lifestyle factors? And considering are they, how much sugar are you taking? Are you stretching enough at the end of exercise mm -hmm. as well? Are yep. you taking like joint mobility supplements, Only which I do? super important for joint health. MSN, glycosamine, yep. our superior joint combinations. But I think those things have really helped me. And then the other very obvious one is, and I don't know again your history, but I found that when I wasn't on HRT, um, before I went on HRT, I had very stiff joints after exercise, and HRT really helped to decrease that. And then during COVID, I ran out of my prescription, mm -hmm. and for three months I didn't have it. And I remember I was walking up a mountain, and my joints were so sore afterwards, yeah. and I thought, what's happened? And it was literally that I didn't have that HRT. Mm -hmm. I remember yeah. that you were, yeah, you had your really, needles. I, it was just like yeah. I turned into an 80 year old woman. Okay, should we go, yes? Um, can we just quickly chat about the link between exercise and mood? Mood, yes. oh my god, we so can. Yes, let's talk about it. I mean, Nat, this is like Nat's like, oh, it's like a, the, the, the trifle for me. Okay, what is the link and what do you notice with people and why is it so important for mood, Nat? Okay, so obviously you've got the chemical reaction that happens in your body. You are going to produce endorphins, you are going to produce dopamine. The effect that it has on your body. You put your body under a micro under stress when you exercise. After that, you after that stress is gone, you start to your body releases endorphins. It releases dopamine. These are your happy hormones. Um, so yeah, at a chemical level, um, it, you are changing your body, the way your body thinks and feels. Secondly, you feel more in control. About if you if, you know we like to be people like to be in control. If you do a workout, that's your decision, you've done it, you feel you've done something good for yourself, and you can completely switch your mood, because in that time that you are working out, you will not think about anything else. Yeah. Um, and, and in terms of the, the physical, you know, obviously you've got the hormones, and you, you, if, you're fee, if you're working out, you're gonna feel a bit more confident about your body, maybe you're gonna change the shape of your body, so from an aesthetic standpoint, that's gonna make you feel a little bit better as well. Um, I think also the energy you will bring into your life for me is crucial because when I don't exercise my energy is quite low mm -hmm. and all the things you've mentioned contribute yeah. to energy but just I have you know lots of you say why do I have so much energy training it is that combination of I do that for one I think doing something for yourself is one yeah. of the most important things here because we can put everyone else in our life more ahead of that we can give every reason not to do it because you're too busy to do something else but it's those little moments of things we do for ourselves that give us that energy in our life. So and you sleep better as well. Yeah, you do a workout, you have to sleep better. Your body is like, again, at that same level, you start to produce more energy. Just okay. Great. So, should we get into now what we're going to put inside our body? Yeah? Follow me, Alba. Okay. This is our little fuel. Our, our fuel. Okay. So, right. so this is what I thought would be interesting for us to do is um, before I met you, Nat, mm. I, I must have through my life met lots of different people who tried to teach me about healthy eating, and I have some very unhealthy habits. Like mm. I love sugar, I love bread, um, and I love grazing. Um, and what I found as I reached that perimenopausal menopausal stage is the the, the, my metabolism changed, and I think a lot of women getting in that stage, metabolism yeah. changes. So all the things I could do for sugars in my tea for 20 years suddenly had an effect on my body that was far more negative. So I had to kind of wake up to the fact that did I want to just, you know, I'm gonna say comfort eat because I eat all those things like sort of sugar and hot chocolates and lots of chocolate and bread when I want to feel full and not empty, and I'm talking about that physically and psychologically, mm -hmm. okay? It can happen in both ways. So slowly I've evolved to this. So I'm gonna take you through what I eat, and then we're gonna go through what you've said. So I used to have for breakfast, um, I used to have like two things of bread or croissant, which I still do at the weekend, but I would, I would have bread, 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 bread. Um, and I lived a little bit on the continent, so cheese and bread and things like that. And now I switch during the week and I either have this, and this is, oh, that's made for you, this is two eggs, 
half an avocado, some broccoli and some tomato, lots of salt and pepper and some chives normally, like a little frittata flat omelet squished down with a spatula. And I have that for breakfast, all right? It feels good, it's great protein. Otherwise, I have a seed breakfast. And the seed breakfast is based in oat milk. And then I have all, literally, the seed. I have flaked almonds, I have the seed mix, I have um, sesame seeds, I have uh, a bit of a coconut, I have, um, this is the amazing one. This yeah. one you told me about, yes. the riced cauliflower, which you yeah. might think, oh my God, how disgusting, okay. Um, but it's, it's really interesting. Um, sweet and tangy striped apricots and something else. So I'm gonna get one of the girls here because it's a bit cold, but I want you to eat it and tell me, is that yucky or not? So come over here, Faith, who you never see is gonna try a bit now. It's cold though. And tell me, could you have that for breakfast? Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. great. All right, good. Not just that I've got used to it. Yeah, a bit more. Okay, fantastic. All right, so it's like, it should be delicious. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we should be eating it slowly. This yeah. is the thing I'm not there yet, Natal. Can uh -huh. I just talk to you about that? Because yeah. I, I sometimes just gobble my breakfast. Yeah. And I just, this thing of like chewing 28 times, Dr. Set. I don't know how many of you remember the incredibly handsome Dr. Set, all right? Remember from the Viva Maya. <laughs> Who could forget Dr. Seb? And he said to me, Trini, you just have to chew. I'm like, <laughs> and it, it's just that, you know, but you, okay, say in English again. I mean, he's very lovely English, but yes. why do we need to chew more? Because of, <sighs> you need to produce enzymes, digestive enzymes. You need to get your stomach acid ready for digesting. Otherwise, you're not going to absorb the as many nutrients from your food as you could and you might start to feel a bit bloated. However, I'm also a gobbler. I you will are, okay. just God, yeah, wolf okay. my food down. Yeah. It is at you know a comedic rate. But um, one thing that really helps, which is is actually doing um, box breathing before you eat. Now this okay, may sound what, a little I mean, bit too I love far out. Bringing something, okay? What's box breathing? <laughs> tell me, tell us all about it. We want to so you want to set your nervous system up for digestion. If you're eating in that fight or flight mode, your cortisol is up, you're not actually gonna be producing as much stomach acid as you should, yeah. and you're not gonna get um, those enzymes. Digesting your food beautifully. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So you just do a couple of rounds of um, parasympathetic nervous system breathing. <laughs> Tell us all about it. Well, we can do it together. Okay, today. let's do it together. Okay. So we're sitting down, let's sit down at the table. Okay, we're, we're ready to eat our delicious, healthy yeah. breakfast. Yeah, here we are. Okay. Yeah. And you can join us too. Which breakfast would you like this morning? Um, um, I would go for this because okay, it's you a lovely. Okay, you Okay, yes. All right. Okay, so we, before we eat, yep. you're going to inhale through the nose for mm -hmm. four, three, two, one. Hold it for three, two, one. Exhale for four, three, two, one. And again, inhale for three, two, one. Hold it for three, two, one. One, exhale, four, three, two, one. And when you do that, you start to soothe the nervous system and you're a little more ready to digest your food. Okay. You're How many not times do I have to do it? Like I would say just times. two or three okay. times. And if you really want to go for it, then you can inhale for four, hold for two, exhale for six. It's actually that out breath that really soothes that nervous system. I mean, breath work is a whole other thing that is amazing, but we can talk about that another time. I mean, I get to 20 and then it becomes mush. Mm. What's good about this breakfast is because there's chun chunky seeds in it, you can chew it a bit longer. You have to chew it. So that's that. Mm. So then lunch, you yes, can have that later. Is, you can have it later. So lunch, I always have um, fish and rice or chicken and rice or quinoa. So I always have this mm -hmm. every day. Um, and I, um, it's, today it's got sesame seed on it and there's a little sort of sweetness with some soya and stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's filling, it's got nice protein and, and balance. And, 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 from the and fish. Yeah, and then I don't have anything else. So do you I, not have vegetables with that? I do, yes, okay, a few great. vegetables. Yeah, there's a one or two vegetables. in there, but I don't, yeah. I, yeah, I generally do have vegetables, yeah. Mm -hmm. But what I then would do when I ate like a sandwich at lunch, I would then snack at three and snack at yeah. one. So that kind of keeps me going so I don't snack. Mm -hmm. But I eat early. Yes. I eat really yeah. early enough, I mm -hmm. eat at seven. I mean, yeah. many people might eat at seven, but I used to eat at nine. If I'm going out for dinner, I'll eat at nine, but probably five days out of seven, or even at the moment, six days out of seven, let's face it, I don't have much of a social life, 
I will eat at home. So eating at home is less. It's less, but it's grazing, yeah. weirdly. I get mm -hmm. into bed. This is the other thing, because I get into bed. I'm so tired, I get into bed and watch telly with Charles. Yeah. So I've got a soup, and every night I have a different soup, and it's like a big, it's got lots of chicken and vegetables, and, and maybe has some rice in it, but it's, it's a full soup. I haven't, I, it usually is actually to the top of it, so I have that. And then I get two bits of sourdough, put lashings of butter on them, and then I put cheese, mm -hmm. that's one of them, and this one will be toasted, lashings of butter, mayonnaise, chicken, mm -hmm. tomatoes, and rocket. Okay. Okay, um, and I'll have that. And then 20 minutes later, I'll get that, which is yogurt with berries, and I'll take half a bar of chocolate, and I, I'm in the kitchen doing this, like this. So I can sprinkle the chocolate on the top in chunks, nice chunks, and I have that. And that's my day. Yeah, great. The, um, but then so this. <laughs> sneaky dining. Sometimes, <laughs> like, I, I put agave on that, because agave, I mean, I should probably put cinnamon, but I'm not, I, I just need mm -hmm. that sugar rush at night, which I probably, whatever, I, I enjoy it, so I do it. And then the dining bar is my extra special Saturday treat. Questions? Um, can we talk about so like different lifestyles? As in, Nat, are you vegetarian? Do you think vegetarian lifestyles are healthier? Yeah, what do you think? Mm. So I'm a firm believer in quality over what you know. Everyone is obviously very different. Some people, I'm, I don't eat much meat, and if I do eat meat, I make sure it's organic, it's local, as local as can be. Obviously, if you live in London, it's been raised in part, it's pasture raised, um, and I get it from a really good source. And I'm, I, I do what I call plant focus. So I focus my meal around, around plant-based foods and then I have good quality protein. But I eat everything. Mm -hmm. uh, because that, if I, I'm very busy all the time, I'm running around, I feel like I need meat. And you know, I, I know lots of people probably, you know, lots I have had everyone, discussions with. Uh, yeah, everyone is different. Fitness, everyone is different, yeah. Eat as many plants as possible, you can't go wrong. And if you enjoy me, you should eat it, but make sure it's quality. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Next, Faith. Um, and do you have any cost-effective advice yeah. for people on the budget? people can do yes. it on the budget. How okay. Do do so budget? healthy eating. So when so snacking, for example, you you know go with going to your salad drawer over going to your cupboard because you crude it like carrots, celery, hummus. It's, it is really cheap. You could make your own hummus. You could buy dried chickpeas, and make your own hummus doesn't take, it actually doesn't take very long um, if you are really on a budget. And if you are eating an abundance of veggies, so they don't have to be organic, you're still gonna get the nutrients from non-organic foods. And you can get them really cheap, you can get them at the, you know, when they're going off in the supermarket and they're still absolutely fine. You don't have to spend lots of money. What buy about pulses, meat, meat, buy... is, meat is a thing that always in yeah. a shopping basket costs the most, so how yeah. do you then navigate that? Honestly, I, I would still choose organic if I if I've got that if I'm really on a budget and I have been eating on a budget many times in my life yeah. I will have less meat I will have more lentils beans and I will get um, even frozen fish if it's like if it's like Atlantic cod or something it's actually much cheaper to buy frozen and you can bulk it out with loads of veggies loads of pulses and lentils yeah. and that goes such a long way buy them buy pulses dried as well so dirt cheap and they will last you for ages you can eat healthily on a budget because I have done and yeah. it's possible. <laughs> okay, should we go on to a bit of snacking stuff? Other questions? Um, just one more. Um, so how important is protein and what's its role in strength training? Okay, yes, so yes, protein yes. is the building block of, our t of every tissue cell in our body and we do need it. So if you are vegetarian, you will know that you need to have a combination of seeds and pulses to get that um, protein. So a protein builds your, um, it is going to build your muscles and your tissue. So, you know, you, um, when you digest protein, you produce collagen because, and you need collagen for every single thing in your body, your skin, your intestines, your everything, you need collagen. Um, and if you're not, and your hair, your nails, if you're not having protein, you are, you know, you'll have brittle nails, you're gonna notice your hair starts to fall out. You, it, it is very, very important. You don't need heaps of protein, you're not a bodybuilder, but just a little bit of protein yeah, at every yeah. meal. A little bit of protein at mm. every meal. Okay, so that time when life lets us down and we just binge on snacky food mm. and the snacky food isn't healthy, 
because that's I think in the office we try and have healthy stuff and then there's a time when we all attack the pepper pigs which are these these um, sweets from Marks Spencer's if you don't live in England and they're like the most processed sugar and I will they'll be on the table it will be four o'clock and I just feel my hand like this and you get into a bag and literally before you said Jack's a rabbit you've had ten so how can we then Okay, first of all, I'm going to get something whilst you okay. talk about this. But, right. but you talk about what these things are and why you've chosen them. And I'm going to talk about how you can make it possible in your life. Okay, right. We've got a nice selection here of some berries, which contain lots and lots of antioxidants. They're also low glycemic, which means that they're... Um, so there's less sugar and the sugar is really small slowly in your body, plus they contain lots of fibre. Berries are amazing. If you're going to go for fruit, go for berries. I've also got an apple here, which is an incredible source of, of fibre. Yep. Hummus for hummus and crudités, if you if you fancy a savoury snack. But we're talking about those really that have a sweet tooth, because yeah. I will admit I have a sweet tooth. Yeah. So this is my little hack. Okay, so we're going to do also, well, for you the hack, if you're going to the office, like I like Muji for my skincare, I like Tupperware. You know, I'm a Tupperware queen, and whenever I'm going on a trip, like today I'm going up to Leeds, and what I could do on the train on the way back, I know I will want to snack on the shittiest British Rail snack food. Um, so, how can I not do that, and how can I take something with me that when I'm hungry, I'll eat? So, what are you going to give me that's going right. to make me feel, it's filling it's the It's going to make you feel good. Okay, so... You said you don't really like cottage cheese, but, but I can, I'm going to try it. Okay, yeah, because let's you said try it. to me with berries and and honey. I know, I know, revolutionary. Okay, so sweet cottage cheese. Okay, it's a bit alright. Okay, the reason I'll tell you How why much? I've chosen cottage cheese. Yeah, just a couple of big spoonfuls, maybe you could go for. Yeah, that's it. Right, the reason I've chosen cottage cheese is because it's very high in protein yeah. and reasonably low in fat. Okay. Um, and we want fats in our life, We really, but we're going to add some nuts for that. All right, so we're going to, what kind so of walnut, choose... almond, when you choose nuts, yeah. what are, so we've got Brazil, walnut, almond, and... Um, more almonds. We've got more many almonds. almonds. But more almonds. What, what should we be putting in? Okay, so... Oh, they've got all these seeds too. Got, also, I'm going to talk about sesame seeds in it because okay. I love them and I'll tell yeah. you why. Uh, Brazil nuts, yeah. absolutely incredible for our thyroid because they're very high in selenium. So just two to three walnuts a day is perfect. So you could add in a couple of walnuts okay. if you like the flavour, of course. You actually don't need many. I think it's two walnuts and that's your daily allowance of selenium, which is... I never want to do more than two walnuts. Okay, we'll do more like, than two. snacky. Okay. And then five. we... Five? Yeah. I'll do ten, but okay, walnuts. Go for it. Yeah, right. Go for okay. But okay. Selenium. Okay. Selenium. Selenium is a really you good might, one. You might use I want lots of selenium. Okay, there we are. There's yeah, good for, your, good for your adrenals. Now, almonds, I hear oh. a lot that you should you should soak them or you should have them in a certain way, and I'm wondering... I'm about to talk about that okay. as well. Okay, so this, if you soak your almonds, it is called activating the nuts. So you can activate nuts and seeds. What that does is it activates the nutrients and you're getting rid of something called phytic acid, which is a protective layer that, you're, that um, the plant mm -hmm. will put around the seeds and the nuts. When you soak them overnight, and different things need different amounts of time, so if soaking almonds overnight, you're gonna get rid of their phytic acid. So just soak them in water and a little bit of salt, and then drain them in the morning. They will actually taste really delicious, and you're gonna absorb more of the nutrients, like the vitamin E, there's but if another, I put them in like this, will I still get something? You will still. It's just your body. It's just not quite as much. You, okay. So it's going to be more fat focused. All right. So it's it's just for today. I'm doing it this just way. Just today. That's fine. Activated yeah. almonds we have and they in taste our so good. cleansing balm because Ooh. we do activated oils and yeah. we've done almond borage and linseed mm. and because we activated them exactly right, the nutrients go in your skin. Yeah. So there we go. I, so I you know, know that. All about I activation. know that. Your methodology. Okay. Yeah. Next. We've got walnuts here as well. So you could have a couple of walnuts. Walnuts. They look, if you, food, I think it sometimes looks like what they're excuse me, so walnuts look like a miniature brain. Therefore, they are good for your brain because they contain omega-3. Oh, so they're fantastic for your three. skin, for mm. your joints, mm. for your cognitive function. Um, so walnuts. I think it's about, with food now, it's about the more you tell me about what it's mm. doing for my body, mm. the more I'm thinking, yes, I'd like that. I want to be smarter. I want my skin to be better. I want those yeah. walnuts to come and love me. Yes. You know, it's good that. Walnuts yeah. okay. do love you. Yes. All right. Right. So now you're going to add a nice helping of blueberries. Blueberries. Yep. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. You can add a little bit of 
honey or some maple syrup. Or now, agave, which is better? So I don't like agave, and the reason is because it is, <laughs> she's like, Natalie, food mm -hmm. release. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> no, 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 I like agave, it's very sweet. Yeah, okay. It's because it's very high in fructose. Fructose is very difficult for your body to break down. It can okay. cause bloating. It's just not a good sugar to have, to be honest with you. But the good, the thing, reason people like it is because it tastes a lot sweeter yeah. for the amount of yeah, sugar you're actually it. putting in your body. What about stevia, which I think tastes disgusting? Stevia is disgusting, yeah. and I just stay away from that. Okay. But can we um, put cinnamon on? Or yes. We've only got nutmeg there, but cinnamon. No, this, is oh, cinnamon. this is cinnamon. This is cinnamon. Because cinnamon is like a sugar mm. substitute, isn't it? Not a sugar substitute, but it, just... but it has a sweet sweetness to it. It's also actually great for lowering your... Um, is, it, yeah, it yeah, is. Glycemic, and glycemic. it's a natural antiviral and antifungal. So we love... Antifungal? That's, that's good. For anyone who's got a Veruca? No, <laughs> sorry. I mean, no, that, that actually now has put me off my whole food. But, okay, but, <laughs> but I, I also feel that when I put cinnamon in, mm. it stops my... It's not like chromium. Chronium, chromium, no, which stops sugar chromium, craving. Yeah. But just that combination. So how much honey? They do combine how much honey and chromium. Is enough. Tell me I when I have to stop. I would go for one teaspoon. So really. tell me when I have to stop. Okay, I would stop there. But Trini's probably not going to stop. No, she likes stop. Stop. Okay, okay, so that's great. my snack. So that's just that. You can mix that in. You've got your cinnamon. You've got. And why do I like this? You've got protein. Mm -hmm. Which is great because then you're not going to be getting that insulin spike, yeah. which causes fat storage. Yeah. You're, you've got your nutrients from the blueberries, loads of them, and fiber. Mm -hmm. um, you've got your nuts, so you're getting really good fats, and you're getting vitamin E, you're getting zinc, you're getting omega-3, and that's going to keep you full for ages. Okay. It's a great snack without the blood sugar spike. Now, lots of you might be thinking, this just couldn't be my life. And I remember when I first met you, mm. I was like, I was actually kind of slightly very rude to you about it. I was like, Nat, you know, we're just going to exercise. I just don't want to go down that path. So yeah. Nat kept suggesting you could eat healthier breakfast. I was like, I really am happy with what I got. That was my attitude at the beginning, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, it was. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I, because I just felt I don't need to because I never had needed to address it. But then I felt my energy levels were going and I felt tired mm -hmm. and I thought, I have to do everything that I can physically do for myself to give me the most energy to feel good, to feel I'm 58 and I feel I want to be like this when I'm 68, so how can I do that? I don't believe in pushing back time, but I believe in looking after your body well enough that you don't feel constrained by it as you go down that path. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah? Okay. And when we first met as well, when I first trained you in Grace years yes, ago, years ago, you trained with other trainers, and they were just getting you to do exercises that were not right for you. They're not right for your energy levels. Yeah. And I think we got along because I actually listened to your needs. You got to train for what your body feels and what it needs. So if you're exhausted, do not do a high intensity workout. Yeah. Don't adapt your training. Do some, do some mobility. Do some, do some light strength training. You shouldn't push yourself. You're going to produce cortisol, adrenaline. Your body, you're going to feel awful. So yeah, listen, you are. listen to, to your, your body. body. We say listen to your skin, listen mm. to your body. Listen. Listen. And it talks to you. Any mm. other last questions, Faith? Um, yes, yeah, so there is a debate about yeah. whether um, low fat foods aren't mm. actually as good for you. No. You should just go for the full fat mm -hmm. because they're full of other stuff. What's your opinion yeah. on that? So low that's that is true. Low fat, so for example, let's take milk, that's a prime example. Full fat, low skimmed milk has been more processed and it contains more sugar, it contains less protein, full fat milk, less processed, and the fats aren't actually bad fats in milk. In fact, I would always advise people to have butter, definitely butter over margarine, Do, don't touch margarine, yeah. have butter, um, because you know it's natural um, and it's easier to digest. So if you're having full fat milk, that's absolutely fine, it's only, we're designed to eat fats, we need to eat fats, our, our hormones, to you know, to produce hormones properly, we need fats. Um, so yeah, definitely. I, I, lo I love that protein. argument because I do think there's so much in the supermarket which says reduce fat, mm -hmm. lower fat, and it's just appealing to your relationship with the word fat. Yeah. And it's that it's literally to me a sort of marketing thing mm -hmm. of just what is that actually good? And when you say higher sugar levels and more processed, yeah. that's what I think we should be looking at. Exactly, because yeah. what are they filling, if it's not got fat in, what, what are, are they, they putting in? Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Last thing, I'm just gonna say, things, mm. I, mean, we, we, I do supplements with Shabir, but I've started doing this, yes. which I love. Mm -hmm. And this was, 
advice for Lila by her dermatologist, Justine Hextall. And she had said, uh, try this Simproof. And I've always done pill yep. prebiotic, and this is live bacteria food supplement. Yep. So it's different really. But I take this when I wake up in the morning mm -hmm. on an empty stomach. Yep. And what I, we haven't discussed much, and it's something that you and should be across on over with, yep. is that the body, the gut, the relationship here with here yep. and how we think and feel and everything is so closely connected. So I'm working a lot at the moment on how, because what, do you remember when I had the constipation poo diarrhea moment in, Israel, in, in India? Do you remember that whole, my stomach was just going boom, 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 boom. And I thought, whoa, that's just not good for me. So this, just mm. getting the gut clean yep. and then putting good stuff inside it, I just feel I need to take care of that. Absolutely, yeah. it's so important to take care of it because that's, you know, your immune system function. In fact, there are higher levels of people with depression that don't have good gut bacteria. Yeah. Also, your gut bacteria produces something called butyrate. People that are like naturally lean have mm. a lot of butyrate. They have the, a healthier gut flora. So um, having, it's, it's healthy for your, for your metabolism yeah. as well. Um, it's just so important and you should get, get you know good bacteria from different things like fermented foods sauerkraut yeah. kimchi yeah. also taking i like something called hashtag bs3 i think it's called that's a powder that's got a lot of different probiotics okay. in but i would take this yeah. as well because they're all different you need this only contains three okay and they, but the good thing about simpoos is they've done they have done a lot of clinical, clinical trials, trials on it, okay. so it really works. So now, what I'm going to ask you now, yes. because our people, a lot of people watch this after it's mm -hmm. gone live. So could you just today and tomorrow go to my Facebook and answer questions that you feel are relevant to you? Absolutely. Because there'll be lots of people asking questions, and we want you to ask questions. Because what we want to do is we want to all feel we're on a journey to look after ourselves the best way possible and to be supportive and helpful to one another and to have people like Nat and Shabir and all these different people who come along and chat to us just to educate us about what we can be doing. So, until next week, when I will be live from Trinity London Land, by the way, have you booked your ticket yet? If you haven't, then go onto uh, Instagram or Facebook and you can click on the link and go and book your tickets because we release some more tickets today. I can't wait to see you there next week. I'll be there all day, every day, and we've got special um, Trini Talks we're doing at lunch and lots of other things. So those those tickets will be released, I think, today as well. So until later, thank you so much, Nat. You're welcome. That was so good. That was great. Um, did you like it, girls? Yeah. We really learned a lot, so didn't we? We learned so much. Yeah. So I love the girls, the 20-year-old girls in the room, not 20, in their 20s, learned as much as I hope you ladies and boys around the world did too. Bye. Bye.